Hey everyone, Melissa here. I'm back again. Um, it has been a hot minute since I have filmed a proper booktube video. Um, and I really don't know what to, uh, how to explain like my absence. I, I guess I think I really in, just needed a little bit of a break, which sounds a little odd since I've only been doing this for um, almost six months now. But I just, uh, you know, I, I think I just felt a little overwhelmed with all the, the readathons and the tags and the uh, and everything. So, but uh, I'm back now, and um, you know, thought I would give you a little bit of a taste of our, our recent vacation. We just returned um, a couple days ago from Ocean City, Maryland. So I had a chance to do some reading down there uh, on the beach, which is always great. Unfortunately, it was not a great book. Um, and I had another DNF while I was there too. Um, but you know, if that's the worst thing that I can say about the vacation, which is truly, um, what, you know, that, that truly is the worst thing. Um, because it was a great, great couple days and perfect weather and we had, um, great meals and I, I really, and came back like so rejuvenated and feeling more like myself. So, uh, which uh, admittedly was not the case um, going into the vacation. So anyway, um, but I wanted to, uh, and I'm trying to catch up on everyone's videos. I'm not going to catch up on every single one that, um, you know, that y'all been doing while wow, I've been on break. I think my last video was like May 17th or something like that. But anyway, so just wanted to tell you a little bit about what I've been reading and um hope if there's time if this video doesn't crap out on me then maybe i will give you a um a little bit of recap on maybe midrash and um some other books okay so um i don't know if the sun glare is really bad right now or not i can't really tell but um so um so what i've been reading so you know june is pride month and uh like a lot of you, I like to read, um, I, I like to read uh, LGBTQIA books um, during the month of June, so that is what I've uh, been doing. Um, I'm going to just start with what I'm currently reading right now because it's up on my Kindle. I'm reading XOXY, and it is a memoir by Kimberly uh, Ziesel. Zieselman, or I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, and it is about her experience of discovering at age 41 that she was born intersex, and um, so uh, it so it's about her journey and it's her uh, particularly about her experiences in the, with the medical community. Um, you know, the Hippocratic Oath says to do no harm, and um, she was you know, lied to and her parents were lied to when she was 15 when the surgeon told her that she had to have surgery for undeveloped organs that um, could potentially become cancerous. And then when she, you know, several decades later, she was in her doctor's office and um, they were reviewing her records and she was by herself and looked at her file and saw that she, um, that, that, the the surgery was actually to remove um you know testes so anyway so she writes about the trauma of that discovery and the journey um to where she is today which is an activist for the intersex community so i thought that i think that this is really interesting um definitely eye-opening um learning a, a lot about the intersex community that i was not aware of and I highly recommend this. Um, she writes in a very straightforward style, um, very honest, very candid, um, no holds barred, um, very, you know, very open about about her experiences. So that's XOXY. Can't we tell if you can see that in with the sun glare? It's a gorgeous night um, tonight out on the deck. I don't even know if it's like seventy some degrees. It's a light breeze, so. I'm just out here away from everybody else in the family filming this. So that is my current read. Um, also for Pride Month, I have, let me try to reposition this so not so much in the sun. Um, I also don't want to have other family members uh, be visible in the video. Anyway, 
Uh, also been reading, also read earlier this month, I read In the Dream House um, by uh, Carmen Maria Machado. I actually saw her um, at a Pittsburgh Arts and Lectures event back in, so this was pre-pandemic obviously. So I think it might have been like in February or January maybe of, two th of 2020 and she talked about this book and I was really intrigued to read it and didn't get around to it at that time. Uh, this is an intense, uh, occasionally terrifying, um, gripping, raw, candid memoir uh, about her relationship with a woman, she does not name the woman, um, but uh, during grad school. And the, you know, the woman in the relationship is uh, very emotionally unstable. It's, uh, she is emotionally abusive and occasionally physically abusive. Um, she just, you know, very unbalanced. And so I think, I think I'm going to have to position this again with the sun glare. Um, yeah. I don't think this is gonna work, you guys. Oh my god, I'm so out of practice with this shit. Anyway, um, so let me see if that, that's probably better or as best as we're gonna get. Um, anyway, so yeah, so she was in grad school, she had this relationship, and um, you know, she takes us through the whole trajectory of the relationship, how it began. You know, obviously I think she wasn't, you know, abusive at, at first, um, but it's just this slow, incremental, um, gradual way that the relationship just became so toxic and so, um, so difficult. And you really, it, 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 you know, I think one of the things that this memoir does well is dispel the myth that domestic violence does not happen in the, um, in the LGBTQIA community, um, that, you know, people in queer relationships and same-sex relationships don't um, experience domestic violence. And what Carmen Maria Machado is um, saying is that they most definitely do. Um, and she supports that premise with uh, other real life examples and um, also examples from literature and from you know, other scholarly works. Um, so I give this five out of five stars. I think that this is really um, well worth the time and I think that it is it was a great read. I think a lot has been made about how um, genre bending it is and how um, the concept of the dream house which is a house where the woman lived um, in Indianapolis I believe and well, this is why Carmen uh, Maria Machado was in grad school in Iowa, um, so she would drive to, you know, visit, you know, her girlfriend while she was living there. And like there was like multiple partners. And, I mean, like at one point, um, there were, you know, there was another person. So yeah, um, so very, um, yeah, very, 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 like very tense. It's a very tense read, but it's definitely wor well worth worthwhile. Also, okay, let's position over here. How's that? Is that any better? Maybe if I sit in front of the sun. Okay. Um, maybe that's better. I don't know. Um, like I said, out of practice, guys. Sorry. Uh, also, earlier this month, I read Broken Horses by Brandy Carlisle, also another memoir. I really like her music. I think that her music is... Um, I don't know a lot of her music, but what I have heard, you know, the joke, um, um, you know, the mother and, uh, the story, I, I really, I really like a lot. Um, so, I, but I really didn't know too much about her when I picked this one up from the library. Um, so she grew up in Seattle, she still lives, um, in that area and well, with like her bandmates and her um, wife, um, Catherine uh, Shepard and their two daughters. But it's her, her story about growing up in a dysfunctional family, which uh, her father had some issues with alcoholism when she was younger. And um, she, so she, she writes about that. Um, I, I, the family definitely had their issues, but maybe I have just read too many dysfunctional family memoirs to um, they, 
nothing was like totally super shocking. I mean, th this is not um, the glass castle, um, you know, in terms or educated in terms of uh, dysfunctional families. I mean, like I said, they have their issues, um, certainly. So, but, um, you know, certainly not to discount uh, her experience. Um, she had meningitis when she was about five and was uh, very, very sick. They thought that she was going to die. Um, I think she was in a coma for a while. Um, she writes a lot about that, about how that was such a transformative experience in her life. Um, and then, you know, her family was very musical. Her mother was uh, a musician, a singer, and so that was obviously very much of an influence. She performed as a child uh, in different places um, with her family, with her mother, and with her uh, brother. So that certainly influenced, um, you know, her becoming a musician. She writes a lot about being a woman in the music business and her influences um, and forming a, a band, um, Highway w Women, later on in her career um, to promote, um, you know, women artists. One of the um, coolest stories I, I thought was about how she, she wrote about falling asleep to Elton John's um, songs um, as a child, as a teenager. And um, today she's close friends with Elton John. So um, to that, that's really interesting. But she talks about coming out, um, about being gay. Her faith is very important to her. And um, she writes a lot about that. Um, and so anyway, I thought this was okay. Um, this isn't this isn't the greatest memoir I've read. I, it was it was fine. I, I would give this a three out of five. Um, you know, if you certainly if you're a fan of her music, you'll want to pick this up. If you are like me and you just want to know a little bit more about Brandy Carlisle, um, also well worth um, picking it up. So the other book. Um, so those were my two books that I read uh, pre-vacation. So. On vacation, I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and it is, um, the everywhere. Um, I, you know, I can't, I, I'm in several online book groups, um, and, like, uh, every book challenge or every book list that I see has this one as, like, the hot book of the summer, and, um, I'm looking at my, I wrote a blog post um, with a kind of a scathing review, so I'm sort of, uh, I can link that below, but I am, um, yeah, th this was like a huge disappointment. I don't really have the, the, here, yeah, I'll show you the, um, you know, the cover on my, um, on my screen here, because this was a Kindle read. Um, I was really excited to, to dive into this one. I loved, 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 um, Daisy Jones and the Six, which I listened to on audio, which is the way to go for that one. And I really love the um, Seven uh, Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, so, and this book actually, uh, so this book was, you know, was one I was interested in reading because I, I, like I said, I really liked these two. I have not read any of Taylor Jenkins read Taylor Jenkins reads other like her previous novels and I've heard that this one kind of is very similar to that um so anyway so it's, it takes place uh in August uh 1983 um and it focuses on the Re Riva Riva family um Mick Riva is a famous singer like think Frank Sinatra ish uh, so it, it starts off in like the 50s and the 60s and he is a singer and wants to make it big and her parents don't think that that, that he's a great, great great choice for his wife and you know they wind up getting married anyway and he's like a philanderer and he's like cheating on her with like women and groupies and whatever um you know but he and his wife june have these four kids one of which is from another woman of course um and so he's like abandoned um, the wife and kids like not once but twice and you know the siblings are really tight and they are all surfers and they all you know that that's their thing that they you know that connects them that binds them together 
Um, so, you know, so, okay, this, this sounds like a great vacation read, right? So it's like a family drama, it's like a beach locale, it's set in Malibu, obviously. Um, it's set in the 80s. I love books set in the 80s. I'm a child of the 80s, so I, I love that. Um, you know, an author who I like. This is really bad. I mean, like, guys, it, it, like, I mean, it really, it's really bad. Um, I thought the, the plot is like predictable. It's boring. Um, there's thread plot threads that don't lead anywhere. There are way too many characters. They're unsympathetic. I don't care about any of them. Um, there's like, like I said, too many of them. They, they, some of them need to be edited the hell out of here. Um, she writes like, she describes all their eyelashes. Like they all have these long eyelashes. Like I don't give a shit about their eyelashes. Like oh, who the fuck cares, you know? So, um, no. So the setting is in Malibu, obviously. And you know, the, the, the idea of Malibu's fires. Um, so you know that there's going to be some sort of like tragic event, right? So like that, the fires are a nice backdrop, but the only purpose that it serves is like the, this book is a dumpster fire okay um it is just awful like, like here's some like of the writing i think it's just you know cliche written it's it's simplistic and it's just groan inducing like but they were in love the kind of love that hurts they they hit high so high neither of them could quite stand it and low so low they weren't sure they'd survive them or how about this like i was a boy pretending to be a man when i married you the first time but i am a man now things are different mick said pulling her towards him you know that right like i tell jenkins reed can do a lot better than this and this really feels like uh, a mailed in effort and so you might be wondering like why i did not dnf it because first of all we're gonna do another switcheroo here so we are not in the light okay so that that's a little bit better maybe i don't know um so why i didn't dnf it while i was at the beach so i wanted like a you know a i wanted like a beach read something escapism escapism light um something that uh yeah, you know, so, something mindless. But what usually happens with those, those kinds of books that are mindless and it, like you, that like fluffy reads like that, like you usually feel something for it. And I felt nothing for these characters. I felt nothing for the this this story. Um, it's so yeah, uh, like huge, huge, huge disappointment. Uh, a better location here on the deck. So yeah. So after that, so after the uh, debacle with. Malibu Rising, I went to Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. Uh, a lot of you have loved this one. I made it to page 30 and DNF'd it because I couldn't handle dealing with a, another book that I was just mediocre, that, that was just kind of mediocre, you know? I just, um, I, I, I just couldn't handle it. So I thought that the writing in this one, wait, hold up. Um, yeah. Um, so I thought that the writing in this one was, um, the, the narrative, the writing seemed fine. That it was the narrative in this one that really kind of threw, threw me. Like, it, it didn't seem to really get to the point. I mean, she discovers that her boyfriend is a conspiracy theorist, which is something that really kind of intrigued me. But then we go into this long, rambling, self-centered narrative about, um, you know, meeting him in Berlin, and it's like, we went to this bar, and then we went to that bar, and then we met up with this person, and then, I was like, get to the point already, because, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, it was just like, you know, it, it was like way too much, so they, that was, um, fake accounts, so, um, a couple others that I have to show you, <clears throat> all right, and then I'll do, like, the whole big pile of books later on. So, okay, so back to maybe maybe mid-rash, because I feel like I need to be a completist and tell you what I was reading, what I wound up reading. So I, I read Little Matches, talked about that in another video, I'll link to that there, uh, below. Um, that is by Marianne O'Hara about her um, daughter, Caitlin, who, um, you know, passed away at age 33. Uh, following a double lung transplant. Um, so I, I read that because that, that deals with questions of faith and whatever. You know, I, I don't know if it quite met the criteria for maybe Midrash, um, but, you know, and 
also then then I also read uh, Dusk Night Dawn uh, on Revival and Courage by Anne Lamott. I, I like Anne Lamott's work but she has um, kind of disappointed me lately in her last couple books. Um, you know, I, I feel like they, they've been fine, um, but they haven't really given me any great insight, any great something. Um, so in this one, she is uh, married to uh, her husband, Neil, and uh, she is, uh, I do like the end papers in that, so, and it's not gorgeous. Um, and she is in the third third of her life. Um, this this takes place. Um, she, it, it's clear that she's writing this during the pandemic and uh, post, um, it, probably a little bit during the Trump years as well. Uh, I don't know if the election has happened while by the time she writes this or not. But anyway, um, so uh, and I admit that I am not really remembering too much about this. It, it, it was fine. It, it was a, it was. It was good enough. Um, what I absolutely loved, 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 loved for maybe Midrash was People with a Book by Geraldine Brooks. I thought this was fantastic. Um, this is the story, uh, and I'm like going to cheat and read the back of it be a little bit because it's, again, it's been a while. And I read this at the end of, end of uh, May, but it is uh, Hannah Heath is an Australian rare book expert. So she is called in to uh, work on this uh, on the famed uh, Sarajevo uh, Haggadah, and um, I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. Um, anyway, that has been rescued, um, you know, like from you know the Bosnian War, and um, so it, it's one. It's like a priceless um, volume of uh, Jewish work, um, and it's illuminated with these images. So what Geraldine Brooks does in this book is like trace the history and the origin. Of this book and um, you know the stories are of the people who have interacted with it and I just thought that was it was absolutely fascinating um, it absolutely kept my attention I was um, I was hooked almost right away and uh, very invested in Hannah as a character really I, I thought she was a great character she's very pragmatic very acerbic and um, you know very independent so it kind of goes into a little bit of her backstory as well and uh, so she is, um, yeah. So so it, it's just fascinating. I, I think I think that this one, um, you know, it it it's a uh, it won the I don't know if it won the Pulitzer Prize. That was Caleb's Crossing, but I'm sure it it um, won other awards. So anyway, so this was great. Um, well, one of my one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is because I want to return all the, uh, these to the library pretty soon. But anyway, um, and well, kind of like from my uh, personal point, this book is uh, you can't really tell, but it's worn, and it, the pages are like super soft. So you know, just this whole concept of uh, who has interacted with the book previously kind of made me think that of this. I mean, obviously, this is not a prized work like you know, like the one. Um, described in, in in people of the book but it, it just kind of you know makes you think about you know time and legacies and um, you know our like what we do has a ripple effect on uh, generations to come um, you know what we leave behind and so it, it, it talks a lot about questions like that and uh, so I thought that that was really interesting um, so um, so I already talked about XOXY, which is my current read, and I also have um, four, three other current reads. I thought I had a total of, oh, I do have a total of five, I just don't have one of them. I'm reading Weather by Jenny Offal, um, Ophel, um, and it's fine. I grabbed this when I was taking my son to an eye doctor's appointment. And then I was reading it in another doctor's appointment. I got like 80 pages into it. That was before vacation. So I'm kind of, I didn't take it on vacation. I have a rule that I do not take library books on vacation with me. So this has been sitting for a little bit. I have to get back to that. My audio book is um, a leftover from Springathon, um, as you can tell from the post-it note that I have on here. And it is the story of more how we got to climate change and where to go from here it's by hope jaren jaren 
um, who is uh, the author of Lab Girl, which I did not read. Um, have not read Lab Girl. Um, and this one is fine. Like I said, this is an audiobook. It's working fine as an audiobook. Um, and there's, you know, some, there's, there's some interesting, uh, there, there's a lot of eye-opening statistics in this one and um, you know, really makes you think about our, our, what we've done to the planet and how we can kind of get out of this crisis if indeed that's even possible. Uh, and then finally, I am reading Women Write, uh, a mosaic of women's voices in fiction, poetry, memoir, and essay. This is my booktube spin number two book and it is, um, you know, we have to finish that by the end of June and I'm going to be participating in booktube spin number three probably with the same list that I did before I will link that down below so we can uh, make this an official booktube three video um, so that you know this is obviously the event that Rick McDonnell is hosting um, I had picked this one up in Toronto at a conference in 2004 so this has been on my bookshelves for a while I have a category on my booktube spin uh, list of books that I have had on my shelves for 10 years or more so this is more like 15 plus years so I have a bookmark where I ended it where I finished it you could see the Toronto women's bookstore I don't even know if they're in existence anymore so I had I guess at one point ended stopped reading at page 160 so I, I felt like to do it justice I should reread re um, you know it and um, you know it, these are just uh, very very short brief profiles of women authors and um, some of their writing so um, I'll, I'm probably definitely going to be finishing that by the end of June anyway so that is what I have been up to um, in this absence of mine I hope to be a better booktuber in the near future uh, going forward like I said I, I have been kind of watching your videos trying to leave comments when I can um, there's just been a lot of life stuff happening on this end of things and um but you know and coming back from vacation um we you know th there's been a <laughs> there's, there's been some like other stuff going on too which is fine um nothing that's not manageable so anyway so let me just do the big book pile there and uh yeah so that's what i've been been reading that's what, what I've been up to I have missed chatting with all of you and I look forward to doing so uh, more regularly now so anyway hope you're all doing well looking forward to catching up with your videos and leave me a comment below um, if you have read any of these particularly if you have read Malibu Rising oh my god um, just really I, I just don't know what the, what the, what was going on there Anyway, um, so that's about enough for me right now. This is getting long. I will talk to you in another video real soon. Thanks. Bye.